Jonathan Aitken, starting with you, why do you think that an apology is enough? I don't think that, nor does the restorative justice system. An apology is simply the starting point. The offender has to admit that they've done the crime and express regret for it. But the restorative justice process it really consists of a conference at which the victim comes face to face with the offender. And the uh, victim, for just about the first time in the criminal justice system, has their shout and is able to really say how they were traumatized or upset, what it did to them. And very often these young offenders, because they're primarily first time young offenders, who often think they've done things they've just robbed a property, suddenly realize that maybe inside that property there was someone like their own grandmother who was deeply traumatized and now they've got to make restoration either in cash or in some form of a, an effective penalty. And so it's not just an apology, it's a process run by an experienced mediator and the idea of it is at the end of the system to see, well, the offender may still go to prison. A lot of sort of justice conferences take place in prisons. We've had, lots of, we've had lots of people getting in touch already and Jack Rego on Twitter says, saying sorry is one thing but being sincere about it is another. How many of these criminals are just complying with apologies to escape prosecution? I'd find it difficult to forgive them as scars for being a victim uh, of crime run deep. And that is one of the concerns I'm sure Leroy will have. Yeah. But is that it, it would... Uh, offenders play the system because they think, do you know what, if I can be sincere about this, if I deliver an apology, if I make it look like I'm apologetic and I'm reformed, I could get away with this. Well, they usually don't because the conference system, which goes on for <clears throat> a whole of an afternoon, it's not some, some sort of quick, I'm sorry, it's a grueling <laughs> uh, exchange between victim, between um, the uh, moderator running the system, between family members all join in, and it's very difficult to watch one of these uh, sort of justice conferences without saying, well, there's some real chemistry going on here, and the chemistry is often making the and it's incredibly feel very rigorous. ashamed. Yeah. So does that put your mind at ease? No, not at all. In fact, you know, I, I spoke to <coughs> a couple of um, offenders who I work with because I do a lot of anti-gang work, um, even in retirement. And, you know, they're saying it's just an easy option. It's an easy pass. They can work the system and actually play the game. And they just see it as a game. And as a result of that, um, they'll, you know, take the easy way out. And it doesn't have a jot of difference when it comes to them repeat offending. And that's the real issue. Um, and I myself was burgled. And the last thing I wanted is to know they're going to just say sorry to me. Fortunately, they got custodial sentences because I got good CCTV that caught them bank to right. But the, 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 the real issue for me is what signal it sends to the victim, to the wider public, um, even to the suspects themselves, you know. And I must admit, as a police officer, um, I'd work hard to investigate, arrest, and then lead to a conviction. And then all of a sudden, someone's going to say sorry, and after all that effort, and that's it. And they're not going to face real justice, as far as I'm concerned. And to be quite honest, I just think it's a cost saving exercise. They're not really thinking about the victim. Mm. And they talk about victim focus, but they just want to save some bucks. But are there any situations for you, though, where you look at it and you think, you know, if it's a first-time offence, if it's something more minor, if it's someone who's not yeah, been in absolutely. trouble before... But they're talking about serious actually, sexual offences. Instead of it going down the route of going to court, you know, as you say, saving the money on that, that you would accept that actually this is a good first step to take? I think to some extent, if it's the first time offender and there's real contrition, but my issue is even the, the process you talk about, the infrastructure has been run down, that even restorative justice practitioners, they're, they're reducing the numbers and, and also the fact that these, the quality and experience of these people say, and, and you're not tracking these people to say, well, listen, are they really understanding? Um, are they really understanding that they shouldn't re-offend or, or, or that, is that intervention having an impact you want? Jonathan, you've got personal experience with this and when a member of your family has actually uh, meeting the, the perpetrator of their, the crime they experienced. Well, I had a relative who had a phone mugged from her and by a young man of 17 and the confrontation between the victim, my relative, <coughs> and the young man was pretty shaking for the young man who started to weep during it. He wasn't playing the system. Because he never How really, truly felt... Well, I mean, a good actor. Well, let's assume your 
traditional policeman's view is absolutely right, but there are a few things you said which are completely wrong. For example, uh, repeat offending is reduced by uh, restorative justice. There's masses of evidence from all over the country, but uh, the Thames Valley Police, who pioneered this under an excellent chief constable, uh, have got the repeat offending rate down of RJ cases by a third. But that's when the infrastructure was actually at full capacity. Now it's been run down. You, you, you haven't got the practitioners as you used to. You're not, you haven't got the probation officers as you used to. Well, no doubt it would be a good thing if, in the age of austerity, we could have more restorative. Mm, absolutely, but, we agree on that. Uh, and, and more we, policemen, I'm sure we'd agree on that. Absolutely, we agree <laughs> but, on that but, point. But we, <laughs> let's live in a real world. Well, but, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. We can leave it on a, on a, on a, on a note of agreement, which is uh, certainly uh, very uh, positive. We need more police officers and more probation officers. I don't think anybody would officers. disagree with that, uh, Leroy. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. That's Thank Jonathan Aitken there and uh, former police superintendent Leroy Logan.